You'd think as a school teacher I'd have better notes, but here we are with a chewed up piece of paper. And I'm gonna answer all your burning questions off of this. To breathe, yeah, they taste so sweet in. Knows all my strength, knows all my weakness. Hello loves, welcome back. I'm so excited to be here with you. Today we are doing a Q&A. And this Q&A is in celebration of my 1,000 subscribers. I can't thank you enough for choosing to spend your time with me. I can't thank you enough for watching my videos and my quirky ways and my sense of humor. I know it's not for everybody, but I'm so glad that you're here with me and I thank you for taking this journey with me. All right, without further ado, let's jump into this Q&A. So I have 10 questions that I have gathered from all of your comments and your personal messages to me. And is it called personal messages? No, I think the young people call it sliding into the DMs. No, that's maybe that's for men and women. I don't know. I don't know. Either way, some of you messaged me directly. So we're going to go with that because that's a whole lot safer. And I want to be able to answer those questions for you. So let's just jump right in with the top 10 questions that we have. I eat a whole foods plant-based diet. I don't go by any labels. I don't call myself a particular thing. I just eat food nutritiously and I also make choices for myself, my lifestyle and my beliefs around, around interacting with people and animals. But no, I don't go by a label. I'm simply whole foods plant-based and which leads me to not a question, but maybe a subset of this question. So my family and I all eat in different styles and in different ways. And that's namely why I don't go by any labels because I don't wanna create division or separation. So I just eat a whole foods plant-based diet. I cook for my family the way I eat and my family will choose to have whatever they want on the side because this is a family and it's not a dictatorship and we all have free choice and free will. So I can set great examples and I can hope for the best and we'll leave it there. So far, I'm down about 18 pounds. I think I'm just maybe four ounces shy of 18 pounds. So I'm down 18 pounds. And it's taken about five months. That seems excessive to me and probably to you. I've had some hiccups along the way, but I haven't given up. And I'm not close to my goal yet, or I'm part way to my goal. But yeah, 18 pounds in five months. I'm on the slow and steady path. and I went from a size 12 to a size 10, and that's a huge non-scale victory for me. Um, my clothes are fitting pretty loose, as you can see. My, I, I tend to lose weight in my upper body a whole lot faster than my lower body. So while this is all shrinking away and my head is the size of a walnut, my hips are still about the same size. So hopefully it'll spread out and even out over time. But yeah, I've gone down one dress size so far. So my goal weight is not really a goal weight. I mean, I guess I have a number that I um, that I probably will land at. But for me, as you know, if you watched any of my videos all the way through, then you know this has always been about my BMI. The more I learned about your body mass index, the more I learned about um, visceral fat and the abdom and the abdominal area, especially for men and women. Those are the those are some of the number one indicators of if you'll have a heart attack or a stroke later on, or if your arteries will get clogged. Um, I don't, I'm not a scientist, so you have to do your own research. You feel free to correct me if you want to, share your knowledge and information in the comments. But for me, I'm trying to take off this spare tire and get rid of this extra visceral fat around my organs because I want to live healthfully and nutritiously and I want to be here to see my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren if possible. So my goal is to get down to a healthy BMI and for me that would be somewhere between 22 and 24. And yes, I know those scales 
are not always accurate that show the BMI and I'd probably have to go get it something professionally done where they put you in those machines or float you in water or whatever. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to keep on my path and as long as the trajectory on the scale trends down, I'll know I'm aiming in the right direction. I don't need to know the exact number. I just need to trend downwards in the right direction. So where will that possibly land me weight wise? I, I honestly think I'm probably going to end up between, I don't know, 120 and 130, I'm thinking, but we'll see. And right now I weigh 151.4 or 6. I'll pop my current weight in right here. So this is what I weigh right now. So I've still got a ways to go. Most of my high school years and all of my college years and then all the way through to almost 30, I think I lost weight around 27 years old. From high school through 27 years old, I weighed roughly around 240 pounds and I think I shared a picture or two in old videos and I'll try to link one of those old videos. Yeah, so I that's the most I've ever weighed um, and I weighed that most of my, you know, teenage years all the way through to my 20s, my late 20s. I didn't lose weight until after that. When I did go on my weight loss journey way back when, I lost up until I was about to get married and I was on a weight loss journey for marriage and just trying to get my health together and present my husband with a beautiful bride. He already thought I was beautiful. He had already asked me to marry him. He was already in love with me at 240 pounds, but I wanted to feel good about myself. I wanted to, he was very active and I wanted to be a part of his active lifestyle. So I worked hard to get in shape so that I could join him in those activities. If we were gonna go on a hike or we used to go, you know, go on a bike ride, I wanted to be able to do those things with him and enjoy that outdoor time with him. So I set out on a weight loss journey and it landed me somewhere around 140 pounds and I maintained that weight for the next mm, six or seven, six years and then I got pregnant and I put on some weight. From each of my pregnancies, I gained, not only did I gain, but I kept about maybe six or seven pounds, and then eventually I added on a little to that, so that I ended up back at one, in the 160s from the 140s. So I put on about 20 something pounds after I started having children and settled into life. I gained about 20 something pounds, and that's what we're battling today. Um, I walk every day and I lift weights probably about two times a week, two to three times a week. I don't do heavy lifting. I literally just have some freehand weights, five pounds, eight pounds in my bedroom and I work on my arms and I do a couple reps and then I do squats, I do lunges. Um, that's about all I do. And usually my routine doesn't last more than 20 minutes. My walks, however, are a little longer. I tend to go for longer walks, um, 40 minutes outside. And that gives me roughly one, anywhere from one to two miles, depending on the pace that I'm keeping or if I'm walking for, for to bring my heart rate up or if I'm just out walking at a nice cadence and I land at the grocery store that one usually is a little more leisure, but I try to take a walk every day outside unless there's inclement weather. And then I hit the treadmill, which I don't love. I love being out in nature. I don't love huffing and puffing on a treadmill. Treadmill, I kind of feel like a hamster, but I do it anyways. Um, usually in the videos, you'll see me with a plate of food. I'll have some rice and some vegetables. It's usually that kind of variation or potatoes and vegetables. What you don't see is that I often eat two servings of whatever it is you see in the video. So rarely, and I mean rarely, will I ever just have the one serving because I'm never really full. I'm a volume eater and so I'll get the vegetables and then I'll eat, I'll, I'll eat the veggies with the potato. I don't usually separate them on that first serving just because I know I'm gonna eat it all. Now the second serving, I'll, get, I'll eat the veggies first and then I'll move on to the starch. Um, but that first serving, I eat everything together. Second serving, I'll eat the veggies first and if I'm still hungry, then I eat the starch. 
but I always almost guaranteed have two servings. Rarely will I have three just because I'm usually full after that. That's a whole lot of fiber, y'all. That's a whole lot of fiber. Yes, I did write a book years ago called God's Perfect Size. Um, I wrote that book. That, was, that book was actually a prayer journal that I had, which later turned into a published work. Um, I do plan to re-release it someday, but I'm not sure when. So there was a lot that happened around that book, God's Perfect Size. It went to the editor. I published it under a company that was less, less than ethical and they stole my work. And so I literally had to go through the attorney general to get my work back. And so did a ton of other artists. Now I own the work again. I was bitten once and I'm a little shy about re-releasing that book. Um, I do teach a Facebook group called God's Perfect Size. It's a faith based group so I know that's not for everyone and I know if that's not your cup of tea that's okay um, I'm just telling you what I do in my other time um, so I do yes I do have that book um, do, I don't know if I'll re-release it right now or at a later date we'll see I, I had some pretty deep wounds around that book it was a passion project for me and for you know, a company to steal your work like that when it's something that's so near and dear to you, that was hard for me to endure. But I do love the the work around that book because it really is one of my passion passions. When I found my freedom and I was able to not obsess over food anymore, I wanted to tell everybody, I wanted to bring as many people as possible that information. And before there was ever a book, there was a little Bible study group that used to meet at the church and I would teach that to people. I taught it and shared it in any way and every way possible just because I hate to see people's, people's lives consumed by you know, food and feeling out of control. I want people to have freedom. I want people to feel empowered. And so that's why I wrote it. And that's why I taught the groups back then. And that's why I have my Facebook group now. It's a passion project for me because I know what it's like to feel trapped. And I don't ever want that for anybody else. And so I'll keep teaching it until, until I, until I can't. So most of you know, I'm a teacher. Um, I, not been shy about that so right even right now i just got off work i drove home i tried to get it together for you but it did rain today so this is what we're working with uh-huh we're always having issues out the weather is just not friendly to my hair some days but so i come home from work and then i just pop in my chair and then i start filming and sharing with you so i'm a teacher but what you may not know is that I, my husband and i own a business called soul studios it's a digital company and we create animations children's short films you can always if you ever want to snoop and see um, some of the work that we do our company is called so soul studios and i'll put it here and we create African tales. My husband is from Uganda and we create these African tales for children in the diaspora here or abroad and they want to maintain their native home language of Luganda. We created all these stories and a series around it so that the children could learn. So I'm a teacher by day. I'm a business owner and I run a second company with my husband and you already know I'm a writer. I write. I write all the time. I write blogs. I write books. I write, I write, I write. It's my passion. Well, answer's really short. He's the center of my life. We all love different things. We're all passionate about different things. And when you love something or you're passionate about, passionate about it, it comes out in your speech. It comes out in the way you behave and what you do and what you share with the world. Well, that's just my faith. I love God and I love talking about God and I just can't imagine a life where I didn't. And so, yeah, I talk about God a lot. Um, so that, prob that probably is not gonna change. You, If you come to my channel, you'll encounter it. Do I ever wanna beat you over the head with it? No, but it comes out naturally. So if you sit with me for a few minutes or long enough, you're gonna know that that's a part of my life and that's a part of getting to know who I am. It's just who I am. I, have, I feel like I have a personal relationship with God. I pray, I worship, 
it's me. I hope you enjoyed that q and I'm so glad I got to answer some of your questions. We'll do one Q&A a month and next week, next week y'all, I'm ready for spring break. Next month, I'll do a Q&A at the end of the month. So keep the questions coming, whatever you're curious about or whatever I didn't answer fully here, send me your questions, leave them in the comments. I'll, I'll screen grab them and hold on to them for our next q and I love when you ask me these questions. I'll try to answer everything as honestly as possible. So keep the questions coming. That's it for today. I'll see you in the next video. I pray that God, there we are with God. Yes, it just comes out. I pray that God would keep you safe and bless you. And until next time, bye.